welcome to yoga with me, Harriet. I'm so pleased that you've joined me today. Um, this is going to be a introduction to some warm ups that you can do before any kind of yoga session. I'm going to give it's really accessible for everyone. I'm going to give a couple of different options for some spinal movement um, and for some hip releases. And this is really just an opportunity to bring some warmth and circulation to the joints. Um, and prepare for your day or if you're taking a longer practice it might be something you do before Surya Namaskar if, you, if you're feeling a little tight. Okay so we're going to start with the neck so find a comfortable seat I'm really comfortable cross-legged but that might not be you if your knees are quite high then feel free to sit on a cushion or a block um, or if cross-legged is not good you can take the legs out you can let them drop um, for whatever variation suits you. So the main priority is that you can find some uplift in the chest, find some length in the spine, and as ever, finding some focus on the breath uh, before you begin with any movement. So I do have a video on Ujjayi breath, which you are more than welcome to check out if you're not too familiar with the yogic breath in and out through the nose. So let's start to breathe in and out through the nostrils. And from here, let's breathe in. Imagine space being created in the back of the neck. And as you exhale, releasing the chin all the way down to the chest. Inhaling, lifting the chin, lengthening the throat without compressing into the back of the neck. Exhaling, releasing the chin all the way back down. Going with conscious awareness. Looking for length as we breathe in, drawing a line in the air with your nose. Keeping the shoulders soft, exhaling, releasing the chin all the way back down. Breathing in to lift and lengthen. Breathing out to release all the way. And from here, we're going to take one ear to the shoulder, breathing in. And exhale, releasing the chin back down to center. Inhaling to the other side. Exhaling, releasing down. Moving at your own pace, allowing the breath to inspire the movement. Inspiration comes from that breath in, right? Exhaling, chin down to the chest. Inhale to the other side, keeping the opposite shoulder soft. And exhaling back to center. Lifting the chin up. So we're going to take some circles now and depending on what's happening with your neck at the moment, move at your own pace and never force the neck. There are more than 70 muscles working together um, to coordinate this movement, which is kind of amazing when you think about it. So taking an attitude of gratitude um, for all the things that are working right in your body as you do so. These are the foundations of yoga, finding ahimsa, compassion, that first yama. So let's breathe in here. And exhale, release the chin down to the chest. And taking some circles, inhaling back. Exhaling forward. As you move, just noting any areas of resistance without pushing or forcing in any way. Keeping the jaw nice and soft, 
the tongue soft. We'll take one more circle. And feel free to pause at any point that feels it needs a little more time, a little more attention, a little more breath. You might even sigh it out if that feels natural. And then we're going to reverse our direction. So inhaling the other way. Exhaling forward. And the idea is that, that this is a therapeutic movement. So if you need to slow it down or speed it up or pause, allow your body to receive what it needs. And then when you've completed your next circle, we're going to come back up to center. And if you are cross-legged, let's switch the legs out. So we're always looking for balance from the left to the right side. All a little asymmetrical. So you may need to spend a little more time on the side that feels a little strange. All right. So we're moving now to the shoulders. So let's reach the arms forward. And I'm just undulating a little bit as I've had a shoulder injury recently. So just allowing some time for the shoulders to soften and then straightening the elbows. Maybe you twinkle the fingers just to awaken those nerve endings all the way into the fingertips. Breathing in here and then exhaling to take the hands to the shoulders. If you have the space, the elbows can come in a little or a lot without forcing. And then keeping the head straight ahead, let's inhale, take the elbows up. Exhale to release them back and down. So inhaling up. Exhaling down. You can close your eyes and bring your attention fully into the shoulder sockets. Just noticing if one side moves differently to the other. That's okay. That spadhyaya, self-knowledge that we're building, that observation of the physical body, observation of thoughts, emotions, whatever is arising in the moment. And the next time the elbows come forward, we're going to reverse. So inhaling, elbows come down, exhaling forward. Inhale. Exhale. If you hear some clicks, that's probably good news. Unless it's painful, movement is always preferable to stiffness. So we're going to take one more circle. And relax the hands down. So a second option to mobilize the shoulder um, is from all fours. So we're just going to come into that square position um, in all fours. So from here, we're going to take some circles just to open through the shoulders. So I am pretty open here, um, but just moving to the edge point of your mobility on this particular day, in this particular moment. And you can reverse your direction if that makes sense to you. Do ensure you're breathing throughout. And all of this is really a check-in point point of awareness as we warm up. So just noticing what's here in the body now without trying to shift it or change it. Often when we really push to try to release something, that's when the body starts to tighten up. And then we tend to achieve the opposite of what we were hoping for. So that is our shoulder warm up. Uh, we're going to come into a spinal uh, motion.
mobilization uh, movement now. So there are two options. One is uh, from kneeling. And I'll just demonstrate that now. Um, if you don't feel comfortable kneeling, you can absolutely take a cross-legged seat or any kind of seat to position that feels good. Um, so taking the hands to the thighs, and we're gonna inhale to bring the chest forward and draw the shoulder blades together behind us. Keeping the head about straight ahead. And then exhale, round all the way. Tailbone tucks. Inhale to open through the chest, tail can stick out. Exhale, round all the way. So I'll just show you from the sides. So we are trying to articulate through the spine, inhaling forward, exhaling round. Inhale forward, Exhale round. And you can speed this up if that feels good to you. Fueling the breath with the movement. Fueling the movement with the breath. Ah, we had Smooshy getting very excited about the birds. And you can speed up and then gently slow it down to come back to neutral. In yoga, our spine is the way of um, assessing our age, so numbers irrelevant. In yoga, many yogis have practiced all the way through to their late 90s. Um, so really spinal flexibility is really vital for that feeling of well-being and energy and freedom in the body. So the other option is to come into an all fours position. Hey, Smooshy, you're going to show us how it's done. This is your moment to shine, cat curls. <laughs> oh, yes, he likes to be the star of the show. All right, so we're going to spread the fingers and bring the wrists under the shoulders. And we're just articulating from the tailbone and all the way up. If it's okay for your neck, you can lift the head. And then exhaling, rounding all the way. Inhale, opening up. And exhale, rounding all the way. So if you want to go a little stronger, you can inhale. And then as you exhale, releasing the toes, pressing the front of the feet, the shins into the mat and rounding all the way. Inhaling, toes tuck, rolling forward. Exhale, front of the feet press down, shins press down. We draw the lower belly in, Mula Bandha lifts, root lock. Exhaling. Let's take one more. And if Mula Bandha or root lock is not familiar to you, I will have a video coming out soon. Drawing up with the anus, perineum, sexual organs. And then we're going to come back to center. So you can do that as many times as you need. It's a really nice way of easing out any of the kinks in the spine. If there are any parts of the spine moving as a lock rather than flowing individually. Okay, so the last practice I'm going to show you before we move to the legs um, is for the hips. This is a lovely warm up. Uh, it comes from Kundalini. Um, it's called the Sufi grind in Kundalini yoga. Um, so do ensure that your butt is even onto the mat. Um, you can rest your hands on your knees. Um, you can do this cross-legged and use some support if you need that. So we're gonna inhale forward, taking some rotations out of the pelvis, exhale back. So the head stays straight ahead and we're moving primarily out of the hips and just exploring the range of motion. Inhaling forward, exhaling back. Trying to keep the buttocks connected with the mat as you do so. Maybe you speed it up. And then you can draw those circles a little smaller and smaller until you come back to 
percent. And then we're going to switch the legs out in the name of balance. And then reversing the direction, inhaling forward, exhaling back. Slowing down those circles, slowly making your way back to center. So the other option for mobilizing the hips um, I'm going to present today is from all fours and that is taking circles out of the hips. So maybe you take a figure eight. And you can really just move freely and fluidly and just noting any areas that are feeling a little sticky and mentally sending your breath into those spots. And if you've been going in one direction, move the other way. You can even give your tail a little shake. And then we're going to come to a seat. So um, we're going to move into the lower part of the body now. Um, we're going to move to the feet. If you are uh, looking for wrist support, there is a video available for you um, in strengthening and stretching the wrists. But right here, we're going to start with the feet. So if you're able to sit nice and upright with the legs straight, please do. Otherwise, you can bend them. Um, so we're going to scrunch the toes and then stretch them out. Exhale, scrunch. Inhale, stretch. See if you can keep the chest lifted. And then we're going to inhale, flex the toes back. Exhale, point. Inhale, flex. Exhale, point. Last one, flex. And point. And we're going to take some circles through the ankles now. So we've been doing lots of rotations. Um, which are really beneficial for stimulating the synovial fluid in the joints. Let's reverse our direction. So helping the joints to move more freely. Particularly if you're in a colder climate, these are really helpful. I know when I was living in England, I could hear all kinds of clicks and clacks going here. So you can give the legs a little shake out. And then we're going to move to our last practice. Um, this is uh, something I took from my Shivananda yoga training. So we're going to draw um, that knee in. doesn't matter too much which side you start on. Try to lift the chest up. Exhale. And then inhale, lengthen the leg out. So you can rest the heel or if you're working a little stronger, you can hover it. Exhale, draw in. Inhale and lengthen. Try and keep the upper body lifted. Exhale, draw in. Inhale and lengthen. And release. So let's take the other side. Take a moment to lift the heart and soften the shoulders. We're going to inhale, lengthen. Exhale, squeeze. Nice support for the digestion too as you squeeze into the belly. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, squeeze. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, squeeze. And release. So that is it for this warm-up video. Um, I hope you found some benefit in that. If that is your full practice, please do take the time to rest. Even if it's just 30 seconds or a minute, some time lying on the back in Shavasana or taking a child's pose or any other resting pose to integrate the benefits of that practice. So thank you so much for practicing with me. This has been Yoga with Harriet. Um, please do connect with me if you would like to practice in a private session, whether in person or online. Uh, info at smileinthesky.com for bookings. And smileinthesky.com, my website has all the information about retreats and workshops all over the world this upcoming year and beyond. 
really excited um, to hopefully practice near you, with you. Um, Instagram at Smile in the Sky 16 is me and Facebook Smile in the Sky. So all the information is in the description box below, how to contact me, lots more videos to come. So sending you much love and enjoy your practice. Namaste.